Hey guys, how's it going? Killer B. Um, a lot of you guys have been wanting me to put together a, a video on uh, the leaders that I use for surf fishing. Uh, my stuff's pretty basic. I got everything that I use here. <clears throat> it's changed over the years, but uh, I've pared it down to pretty much this. Uh, I'll go through it. Sputnik sinkers or a regular sinker. I found that on the Texas coast where I fish, five ounces, four to five ounces is usually good. Sometimes when you get an outgoing tide, you'll uh, you'll need a little more weight than that. But uh, standard four to five ounces is a good place to start. I got a zip tie. I'll show you what that's about here in a minute. Mustad ten knot demon circle hooks. If you're fishing for bull reds and uh, black drum sharks. Just about anything down there that's going to require bigger surf gear, this is the hook that I use. I use it for sharks all the way, uh, or bull reds all the way up to sharks, you know, seven, eight feet. It works great. You can see the hook right there. Uh, I got some aluminum crimps here. These are made by Bull Buster. Uh, you can get them just about anywhere. Uh, any kind of aluminum crimp will work. These are sized because I use a <coughs> bull buster leader, 80 pound here, and this is a 125 pound. Two different crimp sizes, so you'll have to use the, if you're using the 125, it's a little bit bigger crimp than that. <coughs> right here, these are the Mighty Mini, um, these are uh, the number two crane swivels. They're rated up to 270 pounds, so these will handle all your bull reds. Up to, up to like say medium sharks as long as you don't horse them. Pull one of them out real quick. It's not a very big swivel, as you can see there. Got a pair of crimping, crimping tools. The line that I use for my for my reels. Uh, I'll go into a video on uh, what I use for reels and uh, my setup on that. But uh, the line that I use in the surf, <laughs> you can't beat it right here. Berkeley Trialing Big Game. I mean, this stuff is, <laughs> you can catch anything on. This stuff is, it's uh, super cheap, but, I mean, it's, it's the best stuff that I've found. Super abrasive resistant. I don't use braid or anything like that. All my stuff is mono. Just because I fish Matagorda primarily for bull reds and stuff. And there's a lot of shell. So you want something that can handle a little shock resistance. And uh, for me, it's been mono, so that's what I use. And it's cheap. Super cheap because I, I re-spool this stuff almost every trip. So it's cheap. You can put new line on nearly every time you go. I want to say one of these. Uh, 440 yards is uh, 6 bucks, Something like that. I like this green. You can go with the clear... There's uh, like a bright high-vis green that you can get as well, and I think there's even a yellow. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure on that. Don't quote me on that, but it's just great stuff, man. I've used it for years. This is what I uh, spool my reels up with. So let's get into making these rigs real quick. Not a whole lot of stuff. Like I said, we've got our hooks here, weights here, crane swivel here. Aluminum crimps by Bull Buster. So I get a hundred crimps that match this right here, and this makes it super easy. So let's get right into this. All right. First thing we're going to do, cut my leader off. I like a short leader. Usually I like about two foot, so I go a little bit over right there, and I cut that off. It's got a pair of wire cutters on these uh, high seas crimps right here. So at this point, I take a 10 knot circle hook and I use a palomar knot from my hook to my main line. Palomar knot's a super easy knot to, to tie. If you've never tied one, Wet it, make sure it's wet. Suck it down tight. I grab the hook, make sure it's good and tight. Okay. 
cut the uh, tag end off there. All right, this is where it gets interesting. I know a lot of guys do it different ways. This is the way I do it. And it's worked for me. I've got a lot of big bull reds and I've never had a problem with them getting off. <clears throat> At this point, you got the crane swivel. Well, it's got the small swivel on it right there. You can see it right there. It goes to the crane. This end's gonna go to your main line. This far end right there. That end's gonna go to your weight. At this end, and I'll show you where I'm putting it. Okay, so this is what you do. See your crimp right there? You run your, uh, your leader line through there, like that. On your crane swivel, the end away from the crane, right there, is going to go to the main line. This end is where I put my main line for my uh, leader. And then I run it back through there. So you end up with something like this. Make sure you got it where you want it. Like I said, I like mine about two foot long to the hook. Okay. You can see exactly where I put that main line. Okay. See it right there? So your coin shovel is going to point straight down like that. This point, get your crimpers. Crimp it down. Make sure it's good and crimped. You can see I crimped it right there. So you can touch your tag end off. It really doesn't matter if you want at this point. So that's what I've got. You see that? So you've got your circle hook there, your main line, about two foot, 18 inches to two foot. I don't like to get them too long because it makes it hard to cast. That's the whole deal with this rig. What makes it very good, it's great for casting. You can even go a little shorter than this if you want. So at this point, it depends on where you're fishing. So if you need a shock leader, you can use the same 80 pound and do two more foot of whatever you want, uni knot to uni knot on that uh, on your main line to your uh, leader for a shock leader. If you're laying across sandbars or something like that, uh, especially if shell is present or something like that. But like I said, I I fish at Matagorda and it's just full of oyster shell, everything else, and I really. Never have a problem just with the big game, the 30 pound big game. Every once in a while, you might have to put a shock leader on, and like I said, I use uni to uni for that. A lot of guys use FG not to tie you know, a shock leader to their main line. But at this point, we're going to assume that this is going to the rod, right? Right here, this line. This is a 30 pound big game. So on the other side of this, uh, this crane swivel, you can see the crane swivel and where I'm cramped right there. This point, I'm going to go through the other side of the swivel. And I use a, I don't know what the uh, proper name is it for it is. I call it a fisherman's knot. Make a loop like this, wrap seven times. Seven for luck. Make a loop. Wet it, go back through your original loop that your finger's in there, and then back through this loop right here. Wet it, pull it down. My wife gets on to me for holding this stuff with my teeth. Old habits die hard. Make sure it's sucked down tight. Trim the spare end tag end off if you want there. <clears throat> so at this point, this is your main line going to your rod. This is the line going to your hook and leader right there. You can see the crane swivel is 
falling down right there. Then you've got this. This 80 pound is plenty heavy because it's crane swivel. A lot of people are going to say, well, what about the tension from the weight pulling around, you know, or something like that, you know, rubbing on your leader. Man, you're not, I'm telling you, I've caught a lot of big fish on this and never had a problem with it. And it makes it super easy to cast and really get some distance out of it. So at this point, whatever weight you choose, so this is a Sputnik here. You're going to open your crane swivel. Stick your weight back on there. So there you go. Like I said, if you want to do an, an extra shock leader, extra two or three feet of shock leader here, uh, do it. Stick it uni to uni. You can even use your crimp on this side for your shock leader on this one. And then at this end, do a uni to uni or an FG knot, whatever you want, if the uh, conditions call for it. Oh, another little trick that I found on these uh, Sputniks right here. Um, once you've been using these for a while, they'll kind of get loose, and you'll keep you'll keep trying to bend them and stick them back together and stuff like that. It just they just kind of get wore out. So what I've found, if you get a zip tie, and this works really well, stick it around the top of the beads right there. Make sure it's over the beads. You might even have to bend the legs down a little, like this, to do it once you're uh, sticking it on there. Okay, make sure it's all the way over the top of the beads, like so. Then, tighten it down. At this point, you can cut it off with your uh, clippers. Spread it out just a little, right there. So it keeps prep tension. That thing is not coming loose. It will freaking bury and you don't have to worry about the beads popping or anything else. Works great. So that's my leader. That's my go-to for sharks, uh, bull reds. Like I said, I keep them pretty short so I can chunk them. I can really get them out there. Everything you're gonna be catching out there is, you know, four to six foot of water, maybe even eight, and it's gonna be cruising on the bottom anyway and feeding off the bottom. So you can even go a little shorter if you really need to get the distance. This kind of gets it up, especially if you've got some tide, you know, up, up in the water column. So this is the uh, leader right here where you can see it real good. The crimped end right there. The crane swivel coming down off that end. You've got this end to the main line right here. And here's your hook and the leader going down there. So I wanted to give you a good shot of it because it was a little out of focus on some of the other stuff. That way you can see. So this is your main line. This is your leader line to your hook with the crimp, the crane swivel, Sputnik sinker. Everything is listed here. You can see the names of it, what I used. Uh, I panned through it so you can see it real well. This is for heavy gear. This would be 20 to 40 pound uh, surf gear, either casting or spinning. Um, if you're going to fish primarily for sharks, you might step up to some steel leader. Uh, even though the circle hook will normally catch them in the side of the mouth, it might be beneficial to you if you're concerned with losing some sharks to step up with some wire. If anyone wants to see a video on how I make my wire leaders, uh, just comment below and I'll get on that too. All these products are going to be listed in the description uh, below. I also list all the knots that I use and where I use them at. Uh, if you have any questions, you can get a hold of me and I'll be happy to answer them. So that's it. That's my leader right there. Use it for everything. Bull red, sharks, the whole deal. Hope y'all found this helpful.